All right, welcome back everybody. EP 210, Sustainable Engineering here in my lab. I uh, wish you all were here with me. So spring term, I think everything's gonna go face to face. So uh, I like to do a lot of labs in this class and you guys haven't got to do those. So I'm really sorry about that. I mean, I have generators that we build. I have, you know, a number of things, hydro projects that we do because we have a pond and we have a spillway. So I'm disappointed we're not getting those in, but um, we're doing our best here to get through this. Um, we just did wave and then on the news I heard a lot about some new wave energy money that's going to Oregon State University so I thought I'd look it up and share it with you so. Uh, this is it it's called pack wave. Myself a little smaller. And here is the setup that the that is currently underway so we've talked about wave technology and one of the struggles is getting the energy to shore and their plan here at Packwave South is to drill under the seabed, under the beaches and bring it on shore inland as to not disturb any beaches or uh, any sea life. So that's the plan. They're gonna have Packwave North, Packwave South, and these are research test facilities that will be generating energy. So it's super cool. Again, it's called Packwave. Uh, they don't have much information in here about, you know, the north site and the south site, but they just got a pretty good influx of resources uh, into Oregon State University, which already has a significant wave um, lab and a wave program, but mostly focused on tsunamis and tsunami survival. Um, but now they're starting to branch out into uh, wave energy. So super, super exciting. Um, we'll be able to see, you know, the live data here at the data site. Um, and then like the South test site, we can click on construction updates and it just talks about where it's coming on to the beach. Um, this is a pretty current update, a 13th, just a couple of days ago. So it says drilling operations uh, started on 117. And you can see that uh, activity is happening. Uh, this is the underground feed supply from this wave technology program. It's super exciting. So I can't wait to see this and follow it and, uh, you know, try to try to figure out what kind of energy form source this is going to be. Um, so check it out. You know, uh, we're, we're going to be one of the leading uh, research institutions here in Oregon at Oregon State. And this is going to be one of the very first wave energy programs in the United States. So it's very exciting. Scrolling through here. All right, so check that out. Uh, I am going to do a new share. Um, yeah, I don't think I need to go to um, Blackboard for any reason, unless there's some questions that you can send me, because I, I can't think of any reason why I should go there. Everything's pretty dialed in. I am a day late for this lecture, so sorry about that. Uh, this will show up in Monday. Um, but I want you to start to think about your individual project. So every year I do an individual project in this class, and that has to do with sustainability and some kind of a life change. So um, again, here's Albert Einstein's concept of sustainability. Um, it's a little negative, but I think it's probably true. The world will not evolve past its current state of crisis. Uh, and he doesn't, he's not talking about climate crisis or energy crisis or you know, fossil fuel crisis. He's just saying, hey, this, this is the fact that we will not evolve past a crisis by using the same thinking that created that situation. So we have got to switch it up in many areas. So let's talk about the individual project. Um, first of all, let me just review our top 10 environmental issues that uh, have been identified. Climate change is one of them. The climate is changing. Um, 
we all should know that it is changing. Uh, the controversy is whether that's a natural change, a natural planet cycle, or whether that is a human induced change. So my opinion on that is, I don't really know, but does it matter if humans can do something to help that change not occur, help us not warm the planet? Uh, potentially it could be us doing that. Why not try to solve that problem, uh, regardless of why it's happening? So um, climate change is number one. Uh, number two is energy, and uh, energy is huge. Three is going to be water. Four is biodiversity and land use. Five, chemicals, toxins, heavy metals. Six, air pollution. Seven, waste management. That's big. Uh, eight is ozone layer depletion. Nine is oceans and fisheries. They're in trouble. And then 10, deforestation. So, you know, it's going to be hard for you to do an individual project on deforestation. Um, so the individual project kind of lends itself to a few different areas. Waste is one. You could do an individual project on reducing the amount of waste that you or your house produces. And I do encourage you to do it with your housemates, whoever they are, if that's your family or, or whoever it is, roommates. It's, it's more challenging to involve housemates because their behavior has to adjust, but it's also, in my opinion, kind of more real because that's what's got to happen, right? So the concept of the IP project is, um, is to make a change, is to understand what we currently do and then make some kind of a change over several weeks and just document it. That's what we're looking for. So the change can be a reduction in something, a reduction in energy, a reduction in water use, a reduction in waste generation. So it can be a reduction. It can also be a production. You can produce energy if you want. Um, that's about the only thing that you could produce. Um, the rest are probably reductions. But I do say in here that it can be a plan to, uh, bullet number three, a plan to reduce a resource or produce a resource. Okay. Um, and what I want it to be, if we can get this, is quantifiable, which means you've got to have a baseline of what you currently are doing. Now, if your plan is to reduce water and your home is on a water meter, then you have the data, boom. So that part's done. You have to collect it still and present it, but uh, you have the data. If you wanna reduce energy like electricity, you have that data too. So you get an electric bill, it shows you how many kilowatts are used and you can go for some kind of reduction. Um, you know, if you wanna re reduce fossil fuel or transportation costs, uh, you could probably, you know, document what you typically do, how much fuel you use or how much you drive. And then if you want to reduce that, then you have to have other alternative methods of transportation, right? You have to, you have to bicycle or you have to ride mass transit or you have to walk. Um, or you just have to plan better, make less trips to the store, uh, make less trips to school, um, make less trips kind of thing. So, you know, there's a lot of different ways to do this, and there's been some really fun ones in the past, uh, really creative ones. I'm not asking you to, you know, spend hours of your life trying to figure this out, <clears throat> excuse me, and then also, uh, you know, impact your world so much that you lose your job or make your roommates move out or something. That's not what I'm looking for. I'm looking for some kind of a uh, a thought process that says, hey, I currently do this, um, it's excessive or it's unneeded or I can adjust that and do better. That's what I'm looking for. So give me an explanation. This is for the proposal. Uh, you're gonna give me a proposal by Friday on your project and I'm gonna read through them, um, but kind of explain what you wanna do, the resource that you're gonna work with. So whatever resource that is. Um, your plan, like what's the plan to produce some energy or reduce some usage of something, right? Uh, so just kind of the general plan and also include how you're gonna collect the data because I want it data driven. I wanna know what you currently do. So that could be just, I'm gonna sit down and think about it last week and 
how much I drove. Like I'm going to document every mile type of thing. That's fine. Uh, or I'm going to go one week and just keep track of it. And then I'll make the change, right? Okay. Uh, and then <clears throat> I do want you to have some kind of assessment plan. This doesn't have to be in the proposal, but it does have to be uh, within a couple of weeks, how you're going to assess what you're doing. Like you're going to grade yourself, how are you going to do that? I'm going to grade you also, so I can tell you how I'm going to do that. Um, and then if you have anything that you think I could help with, like resources or, you know, if you want to make energy and you want to make a generator, do, what do you need to do that? Like. Do the research. There's a lot of DIY projects out there with energy that you could do that would be super fun. I don't care that you look at somebody else's and do it uh, just like theirs. I would hope it was a little different, but um, you know, you're doing it, you're making it, you're gonna learn something through that process. So think about it. Um, you know, I've had students build the hydro generators. I've had students build, you know, solar, panels you know, somehow get a hold of solar cells and wire them together a little soldering and put some other solar panel um i've had students build you know bicycle generators so i've had students do everything so in the generation area it's pretty unlimited i don't want you to spend money that's not the point of the project so don't do that um, but think about your IP project, put the proposal together. There's a proposal up on Blackboard. Uh, I think it's on Monday and uh, kind of spend some time with it. All right, also, look, hopefully you have it because we're going to start to read out of it. So I'll put this up on Blackboard, but I want you to start to look through it. The first part is kind of just an introduction to sustainability. So that's interesting to read through since we've already done that. And it goes through some. Uh, some of the larger issues, right? So the first three chapters, environmental law, uh, you know, risk and life cycle framework, we are gonna do life cycle analysis. So you can start looking at that. Um, I'm gonna start in to uh, chapter five a little bit. So design for sustainability, right? Chapter five, oh, what upside down. Just something designed for sustainability, economic, environmental, and social indicators. And also, we're going to look at the chapter four green building materials. So, there's a couple of things we can pull out of this book. There's not a lot of great sustainable engineering books out there. And this one is very word heavy, like not a lot of pictures uh, and very word heavy and kind of research based. So, um, it was cheap. I got it, and we're going to use it a little bit. And then we are going to read the case studies in the back. So look for some assignments coming from the book, please. All right. I think you've got enough for your marching orders. And uh, look through the wave, the pack wave stuff. That's pretty exciting. And uh, know that there's some wave energy in Oregon. So we haven't had that um, you know, that much. So that whole Newport area. A uh, walled port area, south coast, that's not really, it's mid south coast area. Um, you know, NOAA is in Newport now. So we have some federal money activity in this state with our oceans. Uh, that's super exciting because we have a big ocean out there right off our coast and it can supply us with a lot of things. Uh, it has a lot of things available. Um, we don't want to harm it, but uh, we have to get resourceful with our our energy production. So I think this is an interesting time to be going to school and also an interesting time um, in our energy cycle of the planet. So good. All right. Good luck. And let me know if there's any questions.